Welcome to Using the EAP in Supervision and Orientation for Supervisors. This course will teach you how employee assistance programs operate in the workplace, the steps in making a supervisor referral, and how to avoid common pitfalls when managing troubled employees. Contact your employee assistance professional if you have any questions about the EAP after completing the course. Also, be sure to read your organization's EAP policy so you understand your responsibility and role in the program's success. Remember, top management has endorsed your EAP and expects you to support it too. Enjoy the course and reap the benefits EAPs promise organizations and their employees. Employee Assistance Programs, Some Basics An EAP is a worksite-based program to assist 1. the work organization in addressing productivity issues and 2. employee clients in identifying and resolving personal concerns that may affect job performance. That's according to the International Employee Assistance Professionals Association in 1998. EAPs are confidential. The identities of EAP participants are protected by confidentiality laws. Confidentiality is also assured by the organization's EAP policy. EAPs are without cost to employees and family members. Employees are responsible for the cost of services to which they might be referred by the EAP. EAPs help employees find affordable services to match their circumstances and ability to pay. EAPs do not interfere with administrative or supervisory practices. The EAP will not interfere with your job as a supervisor. The EAP may offer consulting and coaching help on managing a troubled employee, but it will not tell you what type of discipline to use nor direct your managerial decisions. It's true. EAPs are not benefit programs in the typical sense. They are pro-employee and pro-organization management tools that benefit everyone. EAPs are not a safe harbor. Participation in an EAP does not excuse unsatisfactory job performance. Your hands are not tied and you are not prohibited from taking action in response to an employee's continuing job performance problems. EAPs are voluntary. Employees are not forced to participate in an EAP. Getting angry or telling an employee it is mandatory to go to the EAP may harm the program's ability to attract employees and the organization's investment in it. Utilization may suffer. Employees who come to an EAP and say, my supervisor told me I had to come, are typically less accepting of help. EAPs are non-disciplinary. EAPs cannot dispense, recommend, or recommend against disciplinary action. An employee cannot have job security, promotional opportunities, or position status jeopardized solely for participating in an EAP. There are two types of referrals to an EAP. Self-referral, an employee volunteers to participate in the EAP without being referred by the supervisor. Supervisor referral, the employee agrees to participate in the EAP after being referred by the supervisor based on job performance problems, attendance, quality of work, behavior or conduct, availability issues, etc. It's true. An EAP may be charged with evaluating an employee who tests positive for drugs or alcohol at work. An EAP may then refer him or her to treatment. The organization may choose to terminate an employee for violating the organization's drug-free workplace policy if he or she does not accept an EAP referral and follow its recommendations. Is this a voluntary use of the EAP? The answer is yes, because the employee is being offered an opportunity to be accommodated for a medical problem in lieu of termination for violating the policy.